Again, welcome to Machine Learning Lectures. This lecture is covered the decision tree algorithm. So we are going to use the JASP to build a decision tree model. A decision tree model, again, is a classification algorithm, which means the target variable, again, is a nominal data. Uh, for example, a person tested positive or negative or something is true or false. So first, I'm going to start a JSP and we are going to build a model. Then later, we will go through the lectures, the theory behind decision tree. So again, I'm going to start the JASP, which is again a start software, but also it consists of a machine learning algorithms. So here, the first thing to do is to get our data. So I'm going to open a data. Now, when you, you download and you store the JSP, it comes with a data set. So when you go to the data library, you have a lot of data set here based on the name of the folder, it will tell us the work, the task we are doing. So here we are doing machine learning. So I'll go to the machine learning folder and I'll click on the first data set, which is the Aris Flowers. Aris Flowers is a very common data set in the data mining and machine learning. We use it a lot for uh, task. So here, the whole goal here is that we have the flowers, we have the sapel length, sapel width, patel length, and patel width of the flowers. And based on the characteristics here or the attributes, we are going to determine whether the flower and the flowers is a setosa or veni vesicula or vesicola. Then the third will be virginica. So we have three different types of uh, flowers here. So the flowers type is our target variable. So here we want to, again, based on, again, the attributes here, the sapel length and width, and also patel length and width, we may determine what type of species is that, which you have three different types. So that's our data. So the next thing I'm going to do, so yeah, this is a training data. So I'm going to click on the machine learning. And I'll go to the classification section because decision tree again is classification. And I'll click on decision tree. So here we can see our data, all the attributes. Again, our main goal, first they say the target. So that is our target variable is the species. So I'm going to have it there. Then the features, the rest of the features here, which will be our attributes or the four. So this means, all these four variables will determine the type of species. Again, here we have a training set. So we can see now the model is and is building. Yeah. Again, this takes some few uh, seconds or a minute. Uh, it's not like the statistics whereby it takes less than two seconds. Uh, so let's wait for a few seconds. Now we can go through some few attributes here. Again, this is classification for decision tree. So here we can see we, the confusion matrix is already selected. Here we can know the uh, we can know the items or the data that is correctly classified, the percentage. So we have this is like a two by two. Again, actually that's what is coming our confusion matrix. So you can see that here again here our output is three. So it's three by three. So here the whole goal is that we observe setosa and we pre predicted setosa, which means correctly classified. Let's say we observe vesicola and the predicted word setosa, which is incorrectly. Uh, class, but again, with few minutes more or uh, seconds, we will see. The next also, we can have the rock curves. And this is also for evaluation. And if we need a decision tree plot, we can also have it. Actually, let's select a decision tree plot and we'll see how the decision tree looks like. 
normally in some other applications, they will, they will give us the option to select, for example, the percentage of the data for test set and the percentage for training set, or we can do what we call the cross validation, the cross validation to test them. That for us ready means we and test train test ready. It's a trade test. Going to be here, and which means that if we were able to again predict all the 14, so that's accurate. But Vesicola, we have 11 correctly predicted, but one is incorrect. Instead of Vesicola, we have it in a Virginica. Then Virginica, we have three correctly predicted and one is so that's why we didn't get 100 percent we got 0 0.933 then this is our decision tree this is very small decision tree so our root node was a pattern with length uh, we may discuss this again in the lecture soon then we have the pattern width etc so again that's all we need to build a model we can see our main goal is here, what we should, we should excuse me, well, we should look at the test accuracy is 0.933. But again, we can do a lot of things here. We saw the plot for the decision tree. Uh, we can also change the data spread preferences. Here by default, they have these numbers for us. So which is like 80% for building the 20% for testing. So we can also click on the spread. Then you can see 20% testing. So we can change it if we want to. Uh, then we also have the training parameters here. If we want to change it, we can also change it. And we are going to discuss this again in our lectures. So that's the step for building the decision tree model, the training data set, build a model, then the test set. Again, the computer system does all the uh, selection for the number of training and the number of tests. And by default, that's the 80 and 20% for tests. But we can come here and change it if we want to. Now, if I come here, let's say I want to make it 50-50. And I press it to update. So we can see the update is 50-50 uh, is not good. So it gave us the accuracy was 0 0.893. Previously, we have 0 0.993. One of the reasons would be that we don't have enough training data set. Instead of 120, we are using 75. So let's go through the lectures. This will be a very short and quick lectures. So again, that's a decision tree. So this is what we did. For example, we want to build a model, decision tree classification model. So first thing we need is our training set and also the algorithm. We have to select the algorithm we are using then to build uh, the model. Then later we apply the test set. You can see that the test set, the target variable, in this case, the class is removed. So this is where we will know the accuracy, the percentage of uh, records that correctly classify. Then you can see that in our training set, set, the class or the target variable is given. So this training set is about, we have a task ID, then we have attribute one and two and three, which will be either you cheat, uh, this can be some size of something, but this is the income. Based on these three items, we can decide to know whether you are no or yes. So a decision tree induction or algorithm, we have so many of them. The most common one is the Hunt's algorithm, which is one of the earliest. 
we also have the cut ID 3 C 4.5. Now with the Wega, Wega application, the UC 4.5, which is also called the J48. So let's go through this algorithm, the general structure of Hans algorithm. First, we are assuming that we have a, a database, DT. This will be the set of training records that reach a low T. So our DT is our database, the data for training. Now, we say that if the data for training, which is DT, contains records and all the records belongs to one class, then we don't need to spread. Then T is a leaf. So the answer will be something like this because we have only one class. But if DT is an empty set, then T also is a leaf node, but with no data. But now if the DT contains records that belongs to more than one class, this is where we have to use what we call the attribute test to split the data into smaller subunits. This will recursively apply the procedure to each subset until we are done. So that's the Hans algorithm. We have our class don't cheat. Then we build. So we take a refund as our root node. And then we have don't cheat, don't cheat. Next, based on the attribute test, we can find out that we were able to select malicious status. Now the attribute, we select the attribute with the best uh, homogeneity, which means, uh, for example, if I have 10 data set and nine of them is yes and one is no, I may choose it because there's a lot of more yes, et cetera. So we build a model selecting. So we're going to end the lectures here. Again, the main goal of this lectures is not the detail of the theory, but to use again, the JSP to build a model. So this is again data analytics or data manual data science. So again, the first thing is we need a data set. And we can open the data set. I'll go to machine learning again. This time I'm going to open the second data set. So now we have our data. First thing we need to do is to study the data if we need some data preparation, et cetera. So this data have a customer ID, the gender of the customer, whether it's a senior citizen or not, everything is zero here and some one. So it may be if it's a senior citizen is zero, if it's not, it's one. Then whether I have a partner, yes or no, how many dependents, whether I have a tenor ship or phone service, multi multiple lines, these are all attributes, but our class here is either yes or no. So this is what makes it a decision tree. A decision tree always, the target variable should be categorical value. So next I'll click on machine learning and I'm doing, I can do regression. We know regression is like a function. And then we can also do classification, which is what we did. We select our decision trees. Then these are all the attributes. Now, if you think, the first thing I'm going to look for is the class. So I think the class is the last value here. Then we can select as much. If we think ID, customer ID can determine whether it's churn or not, you select it by here. I think ID will not determine. Let's try the gender, senior citizen. Again, we don't need to use all the data, but if we think all the attributes are important, then we can use all the attributes. In this case, let's use all the attributes. Then now we have to wait for a few minutes. And one thing with JSP is that when you open the variable, technically you will get the data, I mean, when you open your data, sorry, I said when I open my variable, when you open your data, you will see all your attributes here. Then you can select any of the tasks, whether descriptive, t-test, ANOVA, 
Miss model. Let's see what is Miss model. We have classical Miss model and also Bayesia. This is the linear Miss models. We also have different types of regression. We have frequency. This is where we do most of the chi square. And most of the, and the functions we have both for classical statistics and Bayesia statistics. Classical statistics number, we could call it the frequencies. Frequencies. Then we have also factor, then this is what we are doing, machine learning. Then we select what task we want to do, and that's it. So we'll see the work done for us. So here you can see that we haven't done anything. There's no really values. So I'll click here, and I'll say I'm doing decision tree again. So there we will see our values. Oh, okay, so my data is open, and we need to do this again. So I'm going back to Chon and select as much possible all of them. Uh, we had they said there's only one. There's only one observation in each level of the factor customer ID. So maybe we can take that one out. And we can see the system is building. So those are the steps. Again, you open the data, machine learning, then select any tax you want to do. So again, wish everyone the best. Thank you.